I call myself a COVID refugee, um, in a sense. Um, I returned to uh, London um, from home in Morocco uh, for a few weeks, ostensibly, in December, and I ended up being uh, trapped with all the uh, labyrinth and regulations. Um, anyway, mercifully, on the fifth attempt, and after much uh, aggravation and expense, I was uh, legally allowed to leave the UK and uh, fly in transit via Madrid uh, to Dakar and Senegal, um, where I spent uh, almost five weeks um, painting and also on the advice of uh, the embassy. Having spent 30 days out of Schengen, I was then uh, legally allowed to return home. Um, I was uh, incredibly anxious when I traveled and therefore I didn't travel with uh, much other than the necessary passport, visa, laissez-passer, um, and the clothes I stood up in, plus uh, one sketchbook, some colored pencils, and um, my camera phone. I usually travel light, but I always travel with oil paints and, and, and other colors so I can always work. I, I don't think I've ever traveled anywhere without a uh, sketchbook and without canvases and paint. It's, it's just uh, uh, inconceivable to me. Um, Anyway, so fortunately I ended up in, in Senegal and uh, this was a place I'd actually always wanted to visit, but always uh, something had always got in the way. So now I was actually uh, forced by Providence, which turned out to be actually quite fortuitous, um, to um, spend time there. And I was absolutely blown away by the potency of the color and the light and also the uh, incredible energy of people there. Um, I found only I'd found that unsurpassed really. Um, I think only Cuba had sort of uh, shown me a people with so much energy and creativity. Anyway, so I was um, in Dakar with very few clothes and uh, hardly anything to draw with. And very luckily, one afternoon I was by a hardware store, and strangely, a man was selling artist pastels. So I bought some. Um, in order to work in colour, and it, it proved to be a, a revelation. I've not worked in pastel since I think I was about 18, um, so that's, uh, yes, 32, yeah, nearly, yes, 32 years. And um, I was absolutely enraptured by the colours and how quickly I could work with them, as opposed to whilst I can work very quickly with oil paint, there are certain things that obviously one has to wait upon. Um, and there was just an immediacy and vibrancy of colour, which, which went very well with the landscape I was in. Um, very, again, very luckily, I was very sort of blessed really throughout the whole trip. I um, ended up um, making a trip one weekend to a small village nearby um, uh, Dakar by the name of Tubab Dialao and uh, renting a small room on the beach there from uh, a French man and his Senegalese wife, who also happened to be a painter. And so he uh, very nicely lent me his brushes and paints and some canvas so I could do some oil paintings, which I did. Um, but I think the novelty of being somewhere so completely different, so completely new, just um, resulted in an outpouring of work. Um, and the energy and the volume of which I, I don't think I've done in, in years. Probably the last time I worked so intensely was in the desert in southern Morocco and, and also many years ago when I first went to, uh, to Cuba. Um, I was nevertheless touched and distressed by how Senegal as a country and uh, many obviously country, many countries outside of Europe and Europe itself, but many countries outside Europe have, have suffered, in my view, unnecessarily severely due to the rather um, extreme measures that have been recommended to deal with uh, COVID-19. And uh, in so much as I found 
previously very successful people, not just in travel, like hotel and, and tour companies, but you know, even builders and, and professionals in travel within the country or other industries who've been severely impacted and in several cases reduced to near destitution by the uh, restrictions. So that was extremely distressing um, and upsetting to witness. Um, and uh, it, it angered me as well. Uh, that said, it also uh, the energy of, of the people I met and the uh, optimism in spite of everything that's happening was, was really quite incredible. I, I've, I've found that, um, or I would have found that uh, remarkable in anyone, um, and particularly in Europe, this was uh, unsurpassed. I was very um, distressed also by um, criticism of, of various people that say, for example, uh, in Senegal, people were having a, uh, getting on with life as best they could. So they were going out to work. In one case, they organized music festivals and, and people were commenting on how irresponsible this was. But um, I felt they were not actually really looking at the broader picture because there were very, very few deaths as a proportion of the population and uh, the virus clearly hadn't spread there or done a lot of damage for a whole host of reasons which people can come up with their own um, uh, results, their own ideas, uh, answers for. But nevertheless, um, people had to live, people had to eat, people had to go out to work and earn a living as best they could. And so the European model of lockdown was just, uh, just untenable. Uh, and mercifully, people were surviving, although I came across uh, several people who uh, had previously very successful businesses. In one case, I met a woman who hadn't eaten for two weeks because she had no income. She dealt entirely with, with tourism and, uh, and other aspects of travel and uh, building that was and were trickle-down effects of, of tourism. Um, anyway, moving on from that, again, what I found without being too heavily uh, uh, morbid um, or, or indulging in a peroration about um, politics of COVID was the immense uh, vivacity and, and generosity of people. Um, obviously, people have... Um, uh, views of, of West Africa which are not necessarily correct or flattering and um, those proved to be entirely unfounded I'm happy to say especially with Senegal I don't think I've ever met a more uh, generous and, and, and gentle nation I know one can't generalize too much but in, in that sense I, I think the generality is uh, of sufficient uh, weight um, uh, to be valid. I call myself a kind of refugee, in a sense. Inspiration, inspiration. I find inspiration comes from work and then it comes from amazing things that happen and, and this was one such a thing. And so I felt that um, being in Senegal completely on my own with uh, having never been there before or imagined I'd go there so soon, um, massively inspiring. I very rarely have had um, times in my life where I've not wanted to draw and paint, but uh, this was kind of um, incredible in that I was getting up with the sun every day and just drawing all the day through. Um, sometimes I'd go out and draw uh, on the beach or buildings or get people to sit for me. I'd also take uh, photographs and, and films because uh, there was just so much to see. It was a, a riot of colour. Um, that sounds like a cliche, but in that typical northern way, you know, northerners who go to the south, artists are just utterly bedazzled by by the colours. Um, and um, as as I've kind of said to people um, since my return, and whilst I was there, I think the only other place in the world other than Morocco I've been so inspired by colour was Rajasthan in India. Um, and so in Senegal, the uh, elegance and the vivacity of the colour was on a parallel parallel um, uh, with that of in India. Uh, and the style, even more so, uh, of both men and women was, was just incredible. So I daily would go out, as I said, drawing and painting, um, filling up sketchbooks, and um, 
uh, also talking to people, filming them, asking them how they felt about COVID um, and, uh, you know, life there in general. And um, I find that being an artist who draws and works in a lifelike manner uh, and from life wherever I can is much easier than taking photographs for me um, because people can see an instant result and they're part of the process so it's it's a collaboration so um, sometimes I pay people to sit for me other times um, I buy them a meal or what, whatever seems to be right at that time and um, on one occasion I was intrigued by um, the pirogues which are these very narrow and robust boats which go out into the sea for fishing and so I asked a friend um, to uh, get a group of fishermen together one day so I could film them, speak to them, do some drawings of them um, which previously had been very difficult but once they realised I was an artist and I wasn't making um, uh, some film that um, they would have found troubling I was I was made to feel very welcome so I, I still have uh, I'd say about six paintings from that which I've yet to do which uh, uh, inspire me in a very epic way um, but as I said it was a real revelation to be working in pastel I'd always considered you know wrongly that pastel was somewhat effete and um, old-fashioned or um, uh, amateur way of working and I was uh, uh, encouraged to find that I could get very robust and muscular and very uh, dramatic results um, by working with pastel which was it is a painting it's a way of painting but it's not wet it's dry obviously one has to uh, fix the colors otherwise the the painting stroke drawing is destroyed but I was able to um, produce uh, a lot more than if I'd just been doing canvases and so on my return to Morocco, I've been able to distill uh, much of, of what I've seen, both from the drawings and the films and the photographs, and to uh, work intensely on that. What I've found really um, uh, enlivening and encouraging since I went to Senegal, and because I have been working um, and drawing and painting now for so many years, is that I found it easier to work from memory and work from drawings rather than always having to have um, uh, the subject uh, sitting in front of me or always having to have uh, reference material, photographs or drawings or, or whatever. It's been easier to work from memory uh, and imagination. Um, and also using, even though I work very, very traditionally, using new technologies in the case of uh, one um, man and his wife I met, I did several drawings of them when I was in Casamance in um, southern Senegal and um, I asked him to do a video call with me um, a couple of weeks ago and uh, I, I did a portrait of him uh, from life but obviously on the screen uh, from here in Fez all the way to uh, Cap Skiring in um, southern Senegal and I was able to do um, a portrait of which I'm very pleased and he and his wife are going to use as the uh, logo, I believe, um, for their uh, new uh, fashion business, so I, I hope so. Um, it was and remains uh, a place I'd, I'd love to revisit. Um, and as I've said, kind of retouching on the uh, uh, personal and emotional level of it, I was, I was heartened by people's uh, resolute defiance, if you like, in uh, not being as uh, hysterical as Western people. I, I, I hate to make these distinctions, you know, West, East uh, or whatever, um, because there are many commonalities we share, but there are many differences. And I think um, through necessity, um, people are more um, aware of death and the shortness, the brevity of life in countries where life is perpetually difficult and um, us in, in the north um, are less keen to discuss aspects of life of which we feel uncomfortable, one of which is death and I think the whole Covid situation has highlighted um, 
a European mania almost for prolonging life at whatever cost, not just personally and financially, but morally, spiritually and creatively. And I think that somehow um, in countries where people are more accustomed to death because of harshness or a different spiritual outlook, there is um, uh, a greater inspiration creatively. Um, I found that the music and the, uh, the art I encountered there was of an incredible potency uh, and, and, and realism, and I don't mean realism in terms of representation, but just honesty, I think, um, which was um, incredibly energizing. And so that, I hope, has translated into the works I'm doing based on my trip because um, as, I, as I keep saying I've seldom found a place that's kind of uh, inspired me so much and I'm hoping that the works I'm going to be showing in this film and referring to um, are a, a homage, an homage to uh, the people and the amazing characters I met whilst in um, West Africa in Senegal. Here at last, Dakar Airport. Some kind of sanity, a mad kind of sanity if that makes sense. But sanity compared to Europe, nonetheless. Ah, social distancing, meters apart, kerfuffle at Madrid Airport, must stand meters apart, angry staff, even though we're all gonna sit within inches away from each other on the plane. Welcome to Looney World. Through passport, paper, PCR, visa, everything checks in Dakar. Inshallah, next stop, Casablanca. Oh my god, I'm so fucking nervous. Please get me home. Just getting through Heathrow Airport. All my tests, all my paperwork, everything. Questions, questions. Where are you going? Why are you going? What are you doing? How long are you there for? You know, all with fucking social distancing and masks. God, what insanity. I can't wait to leave this insane island. Get me out of here now. Casablanca Airport, through passport control, just waiting for my packages. Oh, I can't believe I'm home. Thank God for that. I'm never flying again.
Aku masuk ke 